But what was the reason for it? Like, what was the reason for for someone just coming to your home and saying, "Hey, I'm gonna give you a water filter for free"? Because they want to they want to scam people, obviously. No. Why I else would you want to do that? You want to make money. I understand, but I'm saying if somebody came to my house and said, "Hey, I'm gonna give you a whole water filter for free," yeah. like I wouldn't really buy it. So it was really hard for me to make this video because I swear every time I watch footage from this these events that took place or I even think about things that happened, I actually get really angry and I swear my blood pressure goes up. So that's why it's really hard for me to like even watch footage from this or even edit these videos because seriously, I actually get angry when I watch the kind of stuff that this company tried to do. So basically this, this video is about scams that are going around the neighborhood. Specifically for my scenario, there was this company called Ontario Home Services that was trying to scam my parents. So sometime in October, a salesman by the name of Shafat Shah showed up to my parents' house and he had this pitch that it, uh, the Ontario government was giving away free water filters and air filters and basically they were providing this free service and that's how they kind of tricked these older people, senior citizens. Basically they just didn't do any research on their own until like signing these agreements. But the good thing is I kind of overheard their conversation so I interrupted and I said hey what is this thing that you're trying to sell my parents? And he says oh yeah uh, we're basically giving away these free water filters and air filters and I said okay well let me see the name of your company. So he pulled out his uh, ID card and I took a picture of it right then and there because I already thought this guy was sketchy. I also pulled out my phone and I Googled the name of this company which is Ontario Home Services. And it's funny that's the, that's the name of their company because that's kind of how they kind of get you. You hear Ontario Home Services and you think he's a guy who's from Ontario providing you home services. It's kind of like how their whole scam works. And so I Googled the name of the company right then and there. Sure enough, the only thing that comes up is like pure negative reviews. People saying stay away from this company, it's a scam, just don't even go near this company. So right then and there I was like, yeah, okay, well, everything on the internet says that you guys are a scam, so we're not interested in any of the services you're providing, and basically just leave the house right now. So he left, and I thought that was the end of that. But really it was just the beginning, because four days later, a technician shows up to our house, named, what was his name? Jerry, a technician, this uh, six foot tall Chinese guy, and Basically when I came home, I saw that uh, my mom was like, oh, there was like this guy that came over that started installing some stuff in the house from that company from before. And I was like, mom, why did you let this guy into the house? I already told you that this company was a scam. Why would you even let him into the house? Well, my mom was like, oh, sorry. He was like really convincing at the door. So I let him in. And this guy, he was supposed to install two things. He was supposed to install a water filter and an air filter. And he was halfway through the installation. He was already done the water filter part of it and he wasn't done the air filter part. And that's kind of when I approached him and I said, hey, um, I already talked to your sales guy, Shabbat Shah. I already told him that we want this whole thing canceled. So I don't understand why you're still coming here. And he said, oh, well, my, my manager, I'm just, I just work for this company. So I'm just following orders from my manager to install this. And I said, okay, fair enough, but we're not interested in it. And I want the whole thing canceled. And I want you to take it out and put it back exactly the way it was before. I just want to know what you did, because I don't even know what you did at all. Like, seriously, I actually yeah, yeah, have I no idea. So there's like, there's like just some random person coming into our house here and like doing some shit with their water. Like, okay. that concerns me, so I'm just letting you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 I know. Uh, so there is a long, the cable filter you want to install it? I don't want to install anything. I want it back the way it was, actually. I want to cancel the whole thing. So he said, okay, let me talk to my manager. Okay, so I talked I talk to the yeah. company. Tell him I want to cancel. Oh. Yeah. So he, he talks to his manager. He comes back and he says, okay, well, my manager says that I can just leave it the way it is. And we won't have to, like, sign any paperwork or anything like that. Uh, the company said, yeah, just leave it. You don't need to sign any papers. If you want. All right, we're not signing anything. Yeah, new papers. And I said, okay, I'm not, we're not going to sign anything. And also, if we get a bill in the mail, we're also not going to pay for it. So I'm just letting you know that in case. And he was like, yeah, okay, fine, that's fine. Right, we don't want anything. And if we get a bill, we're not paying it. Just letting you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, take care. So he was leaving. I took a picture of his license plate, too, because I, like, I'm, again, I was collecting as much documentation as I could because I just had bad feelings about this company, basically. Oh, also that conversation that I had with the technician, I also recorded halfway through it. So I had the whole part where I told him that I wanted it canceled. And I had that whole part recorded, basically. Yeah, so uh, basically he left. There was no paperwork that we signed or anything like that. And I kind of thought that was the end of that as well, even though we still had this water filter. Was, I thought it was kind of weird that they left that there. But like, okay, if we didn't have to sign anything, then I, don't, I didn't understand what they could possibly get us on. So sure enough, a couple months goes by. 
and our Enbridge bill comes in. Now, if you don't know what Enbridge is, Enbridge is the company that supplies natural gas to Ontario. So our natural gas bill comes in from Enbridge and tacked onto that bill was a charge for $59.99 for a water filter. Uh, speaking of which, I forgot, I didn't even mention how much this whole thing was gonna cost. So when I saw the contract, it was actually insane how much they were trying to charge for these things. They're charging $59.99 for 10 years, $59.99 per month for 10 years. And if you do the math on that, that's actually $8,000. And they had that times two, because they had that for the water filter and the air filter. So they had $59.99 for 10 per month for 10 years times two. So that was like um, eight plus eight. So that was $16,000 that they were trying to charge for this damn water filter and air filter. It's so fucking ridiculous. Now, the, the name on the bill wasn't Ontario Home Services. It was actually their billing company. I think they were called IntelliBill. And um, on the bill, there was a number as well. So I called that number for IntelliBill, which is their Ontario Home Services is billing company. And sure enough, if you call that number, you can't even get a hold of anybody. You go straight to a voicemail. If you leave a message, they're not gonna call you back. If you go through the different call menus, it goes all straight to the same voicemail and you won't be able to get a hold of anybody. So I tried calling that, no, no luck. And then I called Enbridge and I said, hey Enbridge, like uh, um, there's this fraudulent charge on our account that I want you guys to remove. And Enbridge has a stupid appeal policy. I guess it's good that they even have it, but they have an appeal policy. So basically you, you sign up for this appeal and then the company has like 15 days. The company does have the 15 days to resolve this. Yeah, you sign up for this appeal and this company has like 15 days to respond to it. So I, uh, I said, yeah, I want to appeal that charge. And sure enough, after a couple of days, finally I get a hold of somebody from this company named Selena. She gives me a call. She leaves me a voicemail. She says, call me back. It's urgent. So I called her and I said, um, she said she basically wants to have a meeting. And I was wondering if I could come in this Wednesday to sit down and go over this. And I just really wanted to figure this out and see what happened. So we can discuss what, what happened. And I said, okay, well, why can't I just tell you over the phone? I don't understand why we have to have a meeting over this, um, in person anyways. Uh, I could tell you over the phone what happened. Like, it's not really that hard to, it's not like I can't do it over the phone here. So uh, basically yeah, one of your sales... I just, I'd, ra I'd rather come in though. I'd rather come in on Wednesday if that's okay. Okay, could I explain it to you what happened though, just so you have like yeah. an idea? So I basically told her what happened and she said she still wanted to meet in person. She also said that she was going to give me all of the... She also said she was going to bring all the documentation to the meeting. And do you guys even have a copy of the contract? Because I'd love to see that. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bring in whatever I have. That was another thing that she said she was going to do. Uh, so then we, we arranged this meeting on a Wednesday at some time. I think it was at like 1.30. And they showed up to the meeting an hour early. And I was like, what the hell are you guys doing, first of all? Because you guys are like way too early for this meeting. You guys said 1.30 and you guys are showing up at 12.30. And I, I was like, I'm not even done eating yet. So. Uh, did you guys say 1.30? Because we're still eating here. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, we're just a no bit problem. early. You want us to come back? Yeah. We can go grab some nearby. Too, yeah. All right. Come back. So they left and the whole reason why I wanted them to come back is because I wanted to set up hidden cameras in the house to basically record this whole interaction that took place. So they left, they came back an hour later and at this time I had all my hidden cameras set up, recording and everything. So yeah, she shows up to the house and uh, it was her and another guy. So there's two of them. So one of them was Selena Bali was her name. Her name was, yeah, one of them, Selena Bali. Um, I don't remember exactly what her what her title is. I think she's like the, the assistant of the managers or whatnot. And then another guy who was the senior vice president of the company, at least that was a title on his business card, and his name was Ali Muhammad. So the, they, these two guys showed up to the house and um, so I, I told them to come in. I offered them water, but that's pretty much where my hospitality ends because at this point, I just, I just hate this company, right? So, and the stupid part is when they came to the house, it really angered me because they were trying to act like they were acting in my best interest. They're trying to say things like, Oh, we're trying to help you out and this and that. Right? Yeah. You have to understand, I'm not working against you here, okay? I'm, I'm working with you to try and understand what's happening here. All right. Well, right, right now you're accusing me. That. You're I haven't accusing me. you at all. Listen, I've been just been writing that You're saying, you you're so saying that I didn't cancel when clearly the audio no, says I wanted to cancel. No, we're not saying you cancel. We're just saying that the fact that the, eight, the, the technician came in the house and inspired. Really, they, were, they weren't there to help. The whole reason why they wanted to come to the house was they wanted to collect evidence to support their own case. So the first thing they did when they came to the house, they went downstairs, they took a picture of the water filter, basically as proof that they installed it is what they wanted to do. And then sure enough, when they showed up to the house as well, they didn't bring any of the paperwork that they said they were gonna bring. And they said, oh, did we say we were gonna bring the paperwork? And then did you know, did, did you ask to bring it? 
Yeah, you like, that, I, so yeah, I said Bernie. to email it to us, so, or do you just want to email it directly? Yeah, send, I, I wanna, send it to I me right now. I want, so I want to see it before you guys office, leave. You know? No, I'll send it to you. Send like, it. there's not, like, here, I'll send it. And, yeah, she kind of did say that she was going to bring the paperwork. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bring in whatever I have. But she didn't. Um, but anyways, I still wanted to have this meeting with them, and I basically told them what happened again. And they were trying to basically act dumb. They're like, they're saying, oh, well, why would the technician leave the water filter there when you told him that you wanted to cancel? Like, why would he even want to do that? And I was like, why don't you tell me, buddy? You don't want something, but how does something end up being in your house anyways? Yeah, you tell okay. me. Because no, you're, you, you honestly, guys, right? your, your company is honestly scum. It's scum. But anyways, I just wanted to hear your guys' side of the story. He obviously talked to a manager. It was probably even that guy. And that guy told him to leave it there. And he's trying to act dumb, saying that, oh, why would the... Why would the technician leave that there when you told him to cancel? Anyways, so stupid. So anyways, at that point, I was like, listen, buddy, I know your company's a scam. I was telling, yeah, I was basically telling him. I was, I was like, your company's a fucking scam. That's basically why you guys are doing this. And let me show you the video of the conversation that I had with your technician, Jerry. So then I showed him a copy of that video, be clearly telling Jerry that I want everything canceled and I clearly want everything back the way it was before. So there is a one, the cable filter, you want to install it? I don't want to install anything. I want it back the way it was, actually. I want to cancel the whole thing. Okay, so I talked to the company. Yeah, I want to cancel. Oh. And Jerry clearly saying in the video that no papers had to be signed. Uh, the company said, you know, just leave. You don't need to sign any papers if you want. All right, we're not signing any. Yeah, no papers. So yeah, basically I showed them that, and basically the only response that they had for that was, oh, we're, we're, we're gonna have to investigate further, we can give you a better offer. I can't make a decision right now. I don't, I don't see why not. not look into it. I, why, because you're, what you're asking me to do, I can't do right now. All right. right. If you're saying you don't want to pay anything, I can't do that right now. But I'm definitely open to lowering down the monthly rental no, for you, or no. giving you a year for free. Or, it's canceled, yo. Or like Period. you can buy it out for, you know, a reduced yeah. buyout. No, it's yeah, not right. happening. So it's not happening. All right, so let's just go down the route that we continue. What was the other thing? Oh, and they said that the cancellation had to be in writing. He just okay. left it. Well, either way, like 10 days to cancel, cooling off period, as you guys know. There's the cooling off period right during the cancellation. No, it's, it's, you got to send a letter for a cooling off period to apply. It's got to be something that, like, it has to be done. No, right? man, come on. I don't, like, yeah, you I think don't, the law's, like, law's going to hold that up? It will. You think if we bring that to court? Will. All right. Because we'll see. For, but see, we'll you're, see. you're asking me questions listen, that I don't even want to entertain yet. The court will always favor the consumer. So there's no way you guys will win. All right. I don't think I've even gone down. I just wish you right? like. I'm not a lawyer or anything, but I did take a law class once, and I know for a fact that legal agreements are legally binding. So I know that's like pure bullshit. I don't even know why he was trying to pull that card. So basically, after the meeting, they said they were going to give me a copy of all the paperwork that they had on file. Because I want to send you the full file that we have. Oh, with the call, too. With the right? call and everything. And sure enough, after the meeting, the next day, I checked the emails and they still haven't sent anything with the paperwork. So I called Selena and I said, hey, Selena, where's this uh, paperwork that you guys said you were going to send over? And she said, okay, give me 20 minutes. So 20 minutes goes by. Sure enough, no email. Call her back. At this point, she's ignoring my calls. I call back uh, 20 minutes later. I called an hour later after that. I called two hours later. Uh, basically, she's going to voicemail. She's, she's ignoring my calls completely. So... Um, Ali also gave me his business card, so I started calling Ali to get this paperwork. He's also ignoring my calls. He has, but the thing was, on his business card, he actually had three different numbers on there. So I called his uh, cell phone line, I called his business line, and then he also had a third number, which kind of went to the head office of this company. So I called that company, and finally I got a hold of this guy named Usman, who is the compliance manager. Um, at least that's his title on the email that he sent me. So... Um, I didn't, be, I didn't tell Ali, or not Ali, I didn't tell Usman anything that happened. I just basically said, hey, I want this uh, paperwork that you guys have on file for, for this house. So sure enough, the compliance manager complied and he gave me a copy of the documentation. And sure enough, the whole reason why I wanted that documentation was because Selena claimed that they had documentation of the contract and the completion statement. And sure enough, they did have the contract. But I know for a fact they didn't have the completion statement because they didn't complete the work. I told the guy, to, the technician Jerry to leave and he even said that no papers were going to be signed. So how could there possibly be a completion statement? So sure enough, Usman sent it to me and the completion statement had a forged signature on it. It said R. Castro in plain printing. And you could tell too that the writing was the same writing as um, 
the technician's writing, right? Basically, the, the font, the writing that the technician used to fill out the information was the same as the signature. And it was in plain printing, too. They, they didn't even try to make it look like a signature. It said R. Castro. The weird part is my, middle, my dad's middle name actually is Castro, and I don't even know how they got that information, but somehow they did. Maybe they were like looking on Google or something. So yeah, he filled out R. Castro as the signature, completely forged signature. Pretty much at that point, I was like, good, okay, I have proof now that this company's a fraud and that they're, that they're willing to actually go out of their way to forge signatures. Um, so Selena finally gives me her copy of the documentation, I don't even know, like a day later. And sure enough, her copy of the documentation had the uh, completion statement omitted from it. Like she, they took it out completely. They took it out completely. And the funny thing is I know that they she purposely removed it because when Usman sent me a copy of the documentation, it had the uh, completion statement and the contract together in, inside of one PDF file. And I know that if you want to like split a PDF file, you have to actually use software like Adobe Acrobat Pro or even like preview in the Mac to like delete that page. So you know that they actually went out of their way to delete that page to send me a copy of that. I guess her and Usman didn't even communicate that they had they sent me that documentation. So that's why she sent me a copy of her version as well. And she removed that part of the um, of the document basically because she knew it was like forged. At least that's what I think. Like why else would you re purposely remove this page of the document unless you know it's a forgery? So sure enough, Ali replies and he's like, oh, we never said that we were gonna send a copy of the completion statement. We just said that we were gonna send a copy of the contract and the third party verification call. And I said, okay, so tell me why in this video did you say that you were gonna send a copy of the full file? And at that point I sent them a copy, of the, a short clip of the of the video where Ali said he was going to send me the full file, the, basically with the secret hidden camera that they had no idea was even recording. Because I want to send you the full file that we have. Oh, with the call too. With the right? call and everything. I guess they were shocked when they saw that video. At that point, they basically shut up. They like stopped talking, cut off all communication completely. I didn't hear from them for like the next couple of weeks, at least like three, three weeks. I didn't hear from them at all. I told them, I also told them that I was filing a complaint with the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services. They're basically like a government company that's supposed to prevent these kinds of consumer scams from happening. I don't really know if it works that well, but this company does exist. So I filed a report with them. Maybe that company finally um, contacted this business. So that's when the business finally contacted me weeks later, Selena contacted me. She again, she left the voicemail. No, she didn't leave a voicemail. She called me and I answered the phone. Um, and what she had to say was, oh, she says, okay, so what's, what's going to happen now is we're going to gift you the unit, as in they're going to give it to us for free, in return that we sign a release. That's the words that she used. So if you check your inbox, I've attached a release, right? So anyway, we went over the whole situation and we discussed it. And um, we both believe that it's better if we just gift you the unit. So we would like to end the contract. And I said, okay, well, um, I basically told her everything that I was thinking. The other thing is when that technician was here and I told him to cancel it, he said he called your manager. Mm -hmm. So who was your manager that he contacted? Yeah. Was that Ali? No, no, we did. We, so who was the manager? Who was the manager? Not, we don't know. We don't know why, See, why uh, he said You're full that. of shit. You, know, you do know. know. You're full no, of we Selena. know what you think. Okay, so you think he called us and, and said that, hey, I'm going to leave this water filter. We would actually, we would have preferred if he took the water filter back. Yeah, that like, I don't believe you guys at all. He called you guys. I know he called He called you. He talked to one of you guys. And then you guys said, okay, don't worry about it. We'll just like, he's, no, he's probably no, not going to have fine. any documentation anyways. Let's, we have a contract here. We'll just like try to get as much money from him as we can. That's honestly what you guys did. Yeah, basically I told her it was a scam and I was like, Selena, why are you still working for this company? They're obviously a scam. You're working for a company that scams Canadians. Why are you doing this? Selena, I don't even know why you're still working for this company. You already know they're a freaking scam. Unless you like want to keep working for this scam company. Like, I don't understand why you're still working there. I was basically asked, telling, telling her to quit the company because, I mean, why would you work for a company that scams people? It's just, it doesn't make sense. So she was trying to tell me how not everything that this company does is bad. How can all these con... How can this company stay in business if everything that they do is a scam? And that's pretty much how they stay in business, is by scamming people. Like, just given the whole scenario, you know, we looked at everything, we looked at what you no, said. No, like, I'm not even concerned it. about just me. Like, I'm concerned about what you guys are doing to other people.
Well, I'm. You have to understand that. I mean, you can't say that. You know, you can't say that we we run a business totally on on something like this. We right. Like there's rules and regulations within Canada. We don't have our license. Okay, listen. You guys paid. did so many things wrong there that I just can't even believe it. Like, listen. You guys forged the signature. That's like one thing that you guys did that was like so wrong already on so many levels. Right. But I mean, for you to say, I mean, come on, for you to say that we that we do this to every customer or that, you know, or that we have text call us and be like, hey, I'm just going to leave this unit here after the fact that you told him to take it out. No. That's Listen, why would, happen. can you tell me why the technician would do that? The technician has like no interest really? of leaving that here. I don't know. Like he, he doesn't even have any. Can you, like, can you put him on the phone? Is he there? Is he there? Let me talk to him. No, no. He's, can, can you give me his number? Can you give me his number? I want to talk to him personally too. Um, uh, sure. I can, I can relate that information back to Ali and get him to give me his number because we have various texts, right? They're always on the road. So this specific text, I have to, I'd have to ask Ali for his number. But anyway, but I mean, yeah. Again, I don't. I really can't say. I can't say why he left it there because, per my understanding, like, it he was left. I, I'll tell you why he left it here. It's because he talked to you guys. He said, "Don't worry, we have a signed contract." This customer's fucked. That's why he left it there. No, no, that is not. That's totally out of contact. After I'm done with this, like, I'm releasing all this information. Like, basically, by the end of this, I want all your previous contracts to pretty much be void with all your previous customers. Because, like, what you guys did here was just so fraudulent on so many levels. Yeah, and and how do I not know that? How do I not know that, considering what you guys just did? You don't know that, right? You don't know that. But I mean, I'm just saying, logically, think about it. It doesn't make sense for all everything. We have so many customers per week. It doesn't. We have over a thousand customers. You're saying all of them are fraudulent? I'm saying at least fifty percent of them are. Like, I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't even know how many guys have you guys, how many people you've done this to. If you've done this to me, and listen, if I didn't even have that recording. I'd probably be in the same boat as these customers. No, that's not true. Yeah, because if I didn't have that cancellation recording, you guys would have went through with whatever the hell you guys were trying to go through with. Yeah, she was trying to basically make it sound like what they were doing wasn't bad. And I was like, Selena, tell me, would you be willing to pay $8,000 for this stupid water filter? By the way, I tried this water filter. I didn't notice any difference in the water at all. Even from like before and after, there's really no difference at all. Like the water that you get in Canada is already really clean. So I don't know. I didn't notice the difference. That's probably subjective. Maybe you can say it, there is a difference, but I don't notice the difference at all. Selena, would you pay? Would you pay eight thousand, like ten thousand bucks for a water filter that does pretty much nothing? Like since you guys installed that shit, I don't even notice a difference in the water. Like I don't notice a taste difference. I don't notice anything that's different. Is it on? I guess so. Your guy installed it. Okay. So, like, would you pay eight thousand dollars for that personally? Would you do it? Would I pay? Would I go on? I mean, personally, I wouldn't go on a on a contract. But I mean, would I buy a water filter? Yeah, I buy. For eight thousand bucks. For eight thousand bucks. Not for the contract. No, I would not buy the contract. Exactly. So, how can you tell me that's not a scam? So, um, sure enough, she said no. I wouldn't be willing to pay eight thousand dollars for this water filter. So I was like, how can you say your company's not a scam then if you yourself is saying that you wouldn't be willing to pay this amount of money for this water filter? doesn't make any sense. So anyways, um, I said, I basically told her that I'm not going to sign this release if it has anything in it that says that we're not allowed to talk about the events that took place. I'm also not signing a release. If it says anything like I can't like talk about what just happened here, I'm not signing it. I'm letting you know that right now. I haven't even read it yet. But if it says uh-huh. anything like that in the agreement, I'm not signing it. Okay. So, okay. but okay. So, how would you like to proceed with this? Like, you're gonna review the the release and then get back to me? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna review it and then, yeah, I'll probably get back to you. But if it says anything about like not releasing information, because this information is getting released, because like I don't believe in your company at all. Like, I don't want this right. happening to other Canadian citizens. It's not just about like what happened uh-huh. to me here. And I looked over it, and sure enough, that's what it was. It was basically a non-disclosure agreement, saying that. The homeowner and any third parties can't talk about the events that took place. And in return, they want a copy of all the videos that I took, all the secret videos that I took. And um, basically, you wouldn't be able to talk about it. And I was like, hell no. Like, I'm not signing this crap. Like, why would I sign this when obviously your company's trying to scam us? So we didn't sign it. And I didn't really hear from them again. But we were still getting billed on our um, Enbridge bill for this company called Utility Bill. So once again, I called Enbridge. I said, this company's a scam. I have all the documentation. The uh, customer service agent wasn't really complying with me. He still wanted me to do an appeal. So I was like, let me talk to a manager. Finally, the manager puts in some kind of super appeal. I don't even know what the hell it is. Some kind of extra super 
um, escalated appeal. And uh, sure enough, a couple of days later, we finally did get the credit for like 400 and something dollars, which was the cost of all the previous months combined. And yeah, basically we got a credit for that. And finally, those charges have been removed for our, from our bill. We still have this water filter sitting in our house right now. So um, I don't know if that's gonna get removed anytime soon. They said they did say they were gonna gift it to us. So I guess we, we just get it for free. But the, the most important part is that we got those charges removed and I also have clear evidence that this company is like a complete forgery. Oh, one thing I didn't even mention. On the contract, this is how I know this company is like such a scam. On the contract, they were supposed to charge us for a water filter and an air filter. When I told the technician that we didn't want them installed because he only had the water filter part of the agreement installed. So there is a one, the cable filter you want to install it? I don't want to install anything. They actually went back to the contract and they crossed out the HEPA filter portion of it. And the thing was, the only person that could have done that was somebody from their head office. It couldn't have been their technician because he doesn't have the paperwork. So somebody in their head office actually went out of their way to pull out this contract because that's, they only installed the water filter part of it. They crossed off the HEPA filter part and then they initialed it themselves as well. Like I can't believe you would go through like this, these kinds of things just to like try to scam somebody. It's actually unbelievable. and. That's why I can't let this company get away with it. Like, that's why I feel like I have to make this video because it's just insane that this kind of company exists. So yeah, that's basically it. That's basically all I wanted to talk about, but just some things to keep in mind. Like when you are signing these agreements, make sure you always get a copy of the contract because they actually left no copy of the agreement with us. Be proactive and Google this company and the product that they're selling. Make sure you do your research and look it up. See if other people are saying this company is a scam. Um, remember that even if you do sign a contract, there are certain laws in place that will help protect you. So for example, there is the 10 day cooling off period. 10 days after you sign this kind of agreement, you can always cancel. And then the other thing is there's also this thing called the Consumer Protection Act, where if you were misled in any way, you actually do have one year to, ca to cancel your agreement with these companies. Now you will have to jump through hoops to kind of do it because as you can see, like it took me five months to like even fight this thing and get it completely removed. And it wasn't really easy to be honest with you. It was like, it was annoying to deal with, but it is possible, but you just have to stay, stay persistent in fighting it. And if all else fails, you could always go to a small claims court as like a last case scenario. Now I know a lot of people don't really want to go to small claims because they're because like for most people they haven't even been to court before and I'm sure it gives a lot of people anxiety even like the thought of going to court. But I mean it's either you continue to pay the scam or you fight it. And I feel like the only the best option is to just fight it so these companies don't get away with these kinds of scams. Oh one more thing that I forgot to mention. Um I saw a Facebook post recently that actually said that Ontario was going to put a law in place starting in March of 2018, which is just a month away, or less than a month away. Yeah, they're basically gonna put a law in place that's gonna prevent door-to-door -door sales of air conditioners, furnaces, water filters, air filters, and a bunch of other stuff. We've been doing stories on problems with door-to-door -door sales for years, and we still get complaints almost every day. Now the government says the practice will be banned starting March 1st, offering new protections for consumers. Consumer Alert has met with many homeowners who say they were deceived into signing long-term expensive contracts by door-to-door -door sales staff. Many said they were lied to. She told me, sir, it's all government funded. He said, oh, no, 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 it's free. We interviewed a former salesperson who says he was told to say anything to get someone to sign a contract. You lie to them from the, you know, as soon as you open your mouth. Now on March 1st, a ban on door-to-door -door sales will come into effect. These are the items that will no longer be allowed to be sold door-to-door. -door. It will be illegal for sales staff to get you to sign a contract to buy or rent them. If you are lied to at the door, Consumer Minister Tracy McCharles says you could be able to keep the items for free. If a violation is found to take place, the consumer will most likely get to keep whatever uh, purchase they made and there'd be fines against the supplier. And I think that's awesome. I'm glad that the 
Ontario government has stepped up and they're finally going to start banning these kinds of sales. The law hasn't been passed yet, at least not from what I heard, but hopefully it does get passed and so that way we won't even have to deal with these kinds of scams anymore. Anyways, I think that's it. And leading up to the ban on door-to-door -door sales on March 1st, some sales staff may be very aggressive trying to make deals before the deadline, so be careful if someone comes to your door.